Welcome back to my channel. As we all know, Valentine's Day is approaching and I just wanted to share a few of my tricks and tips to make it a little extra special. It's super simple, super easy. Uh, a few of the things that we do like to make is chocolate covered strawberries. Um, I make this champagne with a little twist and then cookies, sugar cookies. And for the first time I'll be decorating them so we'll see how that's going to happen. But anywho, it's you know, a day of love, it's a day to celebrate love, and it doesn't even have to be with your partner. It could be with anyone special in your life, your best friend, your parent, your sibling, it could be your pet. Every day we should be celebrating love. It's something very special, I think we should, it, you know, it's what keeps us human. Um, Obviously we're going to need some fresh flowers for this occasion, so what I'm doing, I'm just um, opening up the tuber case I just picked up at my local Trader Joe's. They're not the freshest that I usually get, but that's totally fine, we're going to make it work. I'm just going to look at the arrangements and just play around to see what I'm looking for, what I want to do. I don't know about you guys, but I love making my own arrangements. I feel it's more personal. and. You could just cater it to your liking. So um, I picked up the two little vases that I wanted to put them in. And then I'm just going to figure out what I want to do and then just start trimming them and play around. For the second bouquet, I'm just gonna stick to soft pinks just to keep it simple, light.
now it's time for the sugar cookies. Now, you guys, if anybody that, I mean, anyone that knows me, I am not a sweet person at all. I do not like sweets. But ever since being pregnant with Austin, I developed a palate for certain things and sugar cookies are one of them that never really went away. And the recipe that really works for me and I think they make the best cookies ever is two and one fourth cups of flour, half a teaspoon of baking powder, And then we're gonna go with a fourth a teaspoon of salt. You always want to add a little bit of salt to anything sweet that you're doing. It just brings out more sweetness. And now we just want to mix everything together just so everything is incorporated nice and smoothly. For the next step, we're just gonna mix three-fourths cup of room temperature unsalted butter with three-fourths cups of sugar and please make sure it's room temperature it makes the biggest difference I mean otherwise you won't be able to mix the butter um, it'll be lumpy and the cookies won't you know be distributed evenly now then we're gonna add an egg again recommended room temperature but if it's not it's okay I'm not a perfectionist I don't make things perfect Now I'm going to add half a teaspoon, I mean it's a rough estimate, of almond extract and then a teaspoon of vanilla extract and then I'm just going to give it a swirl one more time just so everything is mixed in nice and smooth. Now you guys can always play around with you know the extracts and maybe you want to add more vanilla or more almond or you can add any other flavoring that you like these are just I just think the almond extract makes a really big difference if you've never tried it I recommend it I even put in my blueberry muffin and now I'm just mixing the dry with the wet and then your dough is pretty much done you can use a mixer or you can use a spatula I use a mixer a little bit and then I just um, use my hands to combine everything at the end. So once the dough is ready, I actually separate it in two different sections just so it's easier to work with it. You want it to be like one fourth inch of a thickness. And what I have on the bottom is just the silicone mat and then I put some flour just so it doesn't stick and then I'm actually gonna put a parchment paper on top I do this just so it doesn't stick and it just makes it less of a mess when you're rolling it out and the dough doesn't actually stick to the rolling pin I don't know about you guys but I like my cookies more on the chewer side so I'm rolling it out to one fourth inch of thickness. However you guys want to do it, it's your choice. And the fun thing about baking or cooking is that you can make things that you how you like it. And I apologize in advance, but the camera did not capture when I was actually cutting out the cookies. This is the end result when they were actually baked uh, for six, between six to ten minutes, but mine baked for ten minutes. Um, and what I'm doing, I'm just setting them on this cooling rack just so they continue to cool. At this point, all I want to do is just bite into this cookie. So I might uh, actually have eaten one or two before decorating them. I never get to the decorating part. I'm just doing it for Valentine's Day. And for the icing, I actually used royal icing. That, that's what I really had to research what to do because I don't normally decorate. But I just put in my electric mixer. 
and I just follow the directions. So you just have to follow whatever icing you choose to do. It's best that you do it in the KitchenAid mixer because you're supposed to mix it from like eight to nine minutes with some water. So that's what I did. And this is the consistency I got. And then I'm just adding a little bit of my red food coloring. I have three separate bowls, one for white, pink, and red. So I bought the, the piping bag tips, but I couldn't find my piping bags. So here I am just improvising and trying to make it work just by using a regular, you know, sandwich bag. Um, and what you want to do, you want to start at the edge, basically. You make the heart and then you want to go around inside more and more. I'll show you in a little bit. Um, again, some of my footage was deleted. I don't know how that happened. There was a lot more that I wanted to show you. So basically, this is how you're doing the heart and I'm doing the best I can. Obviously, it would have turned out much better if I had a normal piping bag. So if you're doing this and you have all the right tools, it's going to look much better. and I thought it was a good idea to put the cookies in there just to give it as a gift to someone. I saved some for us but I also um, wanted, oh, it's like a nice gift and I think it came out pretty good. I mean it doesn't look professional at all but that's not what I'm going for. It's homemade, it's baked with love and that's what really matters. For the chocolate covered strawberries you guys, it cannot get any easier. All you do is just put a pot of water, get it to boil, and then you just put a bowl over it, but make sure it does not touch, the water does not touch the bowl. And then you put in your chocolate chips and you just let them melt. And that's it. And then you just choose the strawberries that you like. I usually go for um, a bigger size strawberries because it just looks nicer. These are the ones that I picked out at Trader Joe's. I thought they looked really nice and fresh. So basically once you have them and you melted your chocolate, you just dip them in the chocolate of your choice. And then you can also um, put some sprinkles on it or decorate it however you want to. But basically, this is it. This is all you have to do. And you guys, strawberries, chocolate covered strawberries especially are so expensive right now because of the holiday. Um, making them at home, it's not only, you know, being more frugal, but it's also just doing something extra, good. you know. You might not make a steak dinner, you might not go out, but if you just do these few little things at home, it just makes it a little more, I don't know, special. I'm a firm believer that little things do matter in life and just by making something at home, it just elevates it to a whole different level. Here I'm just adding a little sparkles on top, um, just with, with golden sugar flakes, I, I guess that's what it is. And I did it on the chocolate covered and the pink chocolate. And it looked really good. And again, it's not gonna look perfect because you're making it at home. It can if you're a perfectionist or you're super good at this. I'm not. But I think they turn out not bad. And I mean, they taste delicious. And they looked really appetizing. And we ate them all in one night, almost. I think there was like two left. And for my signature champagne drink with a twist, it's basically raw candy. And all you do, you just put it in the glass before you pour the champagne in there. And basically, I chose red color. There's different colors you can do. But obviously, for Valentine's Day, we're going to go for the color of love. And then you just pop the champagne and pour it in the glass. And if you guys don't drink alcohol, you can do this with sparkling water. 
You can definitely turn this into a mocktail by using any other beverage that you like. This rock candy really turns the color. Um, so basically it, it just looks like a like a pink mocktail or cocktail but anyways this is the champagne that we like to get it's from Costco it is such a good quality it was around $20 I love this one it's if you guys like champagne I recommend you giving it a shot and overall if you guys are celebrating Valentine's Day at home I hope you try one of these uh, tips or tricks um, maybe the cookies or the chocolate covered strawberries whatever you choose to do I hope you guys have a wonderful time and I love you and I will see you next time. Bye!